back, everybody. We are Sports Take Chicken Sports YouTube Network. By the way, the uh, the info that Terry gave us appears to be correct. Yep. Okay, yep. Uh, and I know Terry, and Terry isn't just throwing stuff out there. All right, so yeah, it looks like there's a what's being called the Big Blue Travel uh, Group will be having a uh, an indoor tailgate party extravaganza, which will be uh, hosted by Carl Banks at Xfinity Live from three to seven. Now, keep in mind. Um, that's tomorrow. Uh, so that would, yeah, I mean, that would get you pretty close to game time with an 815 start. So yeah. again, uh, hosted by Carl Banks, road trip, a round trip bus transportation from uh, the Marriott, I guess, and you know, wherever they're staying. I don't give too much to, to Xfinity Live to the game and back to the hotel. So if, if I'm a, a news, if I'm a news station, I might have keep a camera down there just in case uh, yeah. because that, that's too close to enemy territory. But I will say this. As I text you guys, in all the years I covered the Eagles, every road trip they would go to a venue in that city and have an Eagles party, and you know, so yeah, you know, it's only right that a team, especially you know, a, a city this close, sure, I understand, you know, it's a big. There's a lot of tension between New York and Philly. I just, in all seriousness, I hope it doesn't get out of control and stuff happens, which takes away from the ambiance and the excitement of the game itself. But when you're talking about two proud verbal opinionated major markets like Philadelphia and New York. That's like mixing grease and oil, uh, grease and water. It just don't mix. I hear you. All right. Well, you know, what does mix? Well, anything, Michael Barr can anything. And Barrett knows this. Get out of here. Oh, very well. There he is. Can you hear me? We got you. You sound great. Oh, good, 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 good. Cause I got, I got the microphone, but it doesn't, you can't hear me in this, right? No. no, no, but yeah, we hear you really well. It's going to be your, okay. whatever you're, you're doing off your laptop or your, or your desktop is working. So it's all good. Michael Thank B, you. the host of pre and post game uh, for the Eagles, for the Phils, uh, anything, you name it, you throw it his way. Extraordinary. You got the great backdrop <laughs> right there. Uh, Michael, what's going on, man? How you doing? Everything is good. Everything is fantastic. I'm excited about the game the closer it gets. I know Barrett said yesterday he hasn't been sleeping for the last couple of nights. Um, and with Barrett, you put like a little pee under the mattress. He doesn't sleep right. But this is me. You do what? He's, he's okay. Barrett. And you've heard the princess in the pee. And the princess so Barrett, in the pee. That's right. I got you. I got you. you know. uh, I, I want to ask you something before we dive into the game, okay? Yes. You are the ultimate point guard. You do an amazing – oh, there's a glasses. Okay. You go. do a great job of distributing. You are a and, – and, and jumping with your own opinions too. But in terms of getting everybody their touches, whether it's Barrett, whether it's Jaws, you know, uh, the Diddy coming back, the whole nine, getting everybody their touches. How – what's the art to that? What, what, what makes that – what makes, you know, a good host in terms of making sure everybody feels like they're getting their say? It's really, Rob, uh, first of all, thank you for that compliment. I, I, that's the ultimate coming from you, and I really appreciate it. One, it's really trying to not get in the way. Whether I'm talking to Barrett, I'm talking to Gunner, I'll try to interject my opinion as so it, it gets a, a response. Um, Barrett knows that yesterday, for example, I was talking mm-hmm. about, how, and, and for the past week, I've been talking about how nervous I've been about the, the Giants game because the Giants beat Minnesota. I'm not really that nervous, but I want to hear what he has to say. I want to hear what John Clark has to say, what Ray Dittinger has to say, and they did beat Minnesota. So I'm just trying to, to distribute, as you said, and whether it's it's paying real close attention to what other people say so I can interject a question after that or just to come up with statistics or uh, any kind of information, certainly after watching the game, that I think they need to comment on because they're the experts, they're the pros, whether whether it's Ray, whether it's Barrett, whether um, it's Jaws or, or Reuben Frank. I mean, they're, they're all down there in the trenches and, uh, and, and as it was with, with Gunner. For, for all those years. They know, and, and and I'm just trying to get the information out of them because that's how people viewing make their decisions. They're listening to the Derek Guns and the Ron Jaworskis and the Barrett Brookses of the world. They want to know what they think so they can make an informed uh, opinion about what's going to happen or what did just happen. And um, not to go off on a tangent too much, but one of the things we've been talking about, and I'm assuming you guys have as well, is – the difference between Jalen Hurts' ability to throw the ball versus his ability to run with the ball. And and I know I was confused on that because because I had a couple of 
viewers email me saying, why is this guy throwing the ball 38 times against the Giants if he's got an injured shoulder? Well, guess what? He can throw. Gunner, you probably know more about this with your insiders, but he can throw the ball. That's not the issue. And I just heard an ESPN report, um, uh, or at least attributed to ESPN, that it's painful to the touch. Now, I don't know if it's a lot of BS. I don't know if this is a bad source. But apparently, uh, uh, and I know no NFL players uh, go into a game in this season. Barrett, you can attest. No one's perfect. I get that. Right. But but if it is like uh, hurting to the touch, that's not a good sign. But I know he will suck it up and do whatever it takes to, to lead his team to a win. Um, but it ain't throwing the ball. That's not the big deal of it. It's mm-hmm. it's keeping that ball and getting in there through the line and getting nailed again, and yeah. whether or not he can keep doing that because that is really the weapon that the Eagles need to win. Well said. Well said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and landing on the shoulder. Answering like, your question, I'm sorry. Well, landing on the shoulder. No, <laughs> yeah. no I mean that's landing the other. The, part. Right. Yeah, I'm right. more worried about that than maybe taking a shot from from somebody you know going through the hole or what you know whatever you end up doing. But you know, I, absolutely, no question about it. Do you buy into? The, the sort of the, the Eagles, I don't want to say layoff, they had a week off, but really they haven't played well in, in about a month, maybe a month and change. How much do you worry about that? Because I, I keep trying to tell people, you know, the Giants weren't exactly late in the world on fire. and They went out and played great, you know, last week against the Vikings. How, how do you feel about the momentum thing? Uh, I think the momentum thing is important. I think that uh, you have an ebb and flow of the season. You have, you have the, the patterns of the season. And I think as a player – you kind of you go through your um, rituals, and when the rituals are disrupted, it better be counterbalanced by by getting healthy. And and if getting healthy, if you can get that much more healthy with a week of rest, uh, then then you can by you know be more successful by playing every week because that's what you do. Then fine, I'm all for the week off. But I, I know the Giants have their uh, one of the defensive linemen is probably out. But, but other than that, I think they're pretty healthy, and they just played last week. And the Eagles haven't played since they played the Giants in Week 18, and that didn't look too good either. Now, maybe it was vanilla. Maybe the offense was kind of tantamount to a preseason game. They wanted to win the game, but they didn't want to show too much because they could have played the Giants and, in fact, are playing the Giants. But but I, I um, I'm a little bit concerned about this game. I think the Birds will win, but for everybody to just dismiss it like, that's that's why they play the darn games. Mm-hmm. And last year, I think uh, two or three of the division round teams, the home teams lost. And I think two of the top seeds lost uh, in the divisional round. So it does happen. Um, and I'll go to Kansas City and Jacksonville. That's supposed to be a slaughter. There's no way. There's no, oh, really? Unless there's a way. And we'll say, I never thought that would happen. And what's going to happen now with Andy Reid there? And Mahomes can't, can't, can't get it done. Um, so, so, you know, there's always a way that's what, right. that's what upsets are for. Hey, Michael, um, since Jeffrey Lurie has bought this team, they've now made the playoffs 17 times and you've been here for most of them, maybe even all of them, you know, in, in his tenure, compare your enthusiasm about this team to another team that we've watched in Lurie's tenure. Uh, the only, the only other team I can think of is 2017 and that's really only after they got started a little bit gunner um i'm trying to i'm trying to i guess you could pick any one of the andy Reid teams that went to the nfc championship Mm -hmm. game because most of those seasons there were expectations that they would be able to do something special Mm -hmm. i don't know if we thought super bowl but i remember with this team in the preseason this year or last year now, we were talking about they could go to the Super Bowl. And I remember talking to the Diddy before the season began, and he said, Mike, they might not lose their first six games. Little did, did we know what they won their first 10 or 11 games, you know. But but he saw that right off the bat. I know you guys saw that right off the bat. So now anything less than a Super Bowl appearance will be uh, unexpected, if not disappointed. We're, we're, we're thinking that they're going to go to the Super Bowl. That is a high bar. It's a great question, Gunnar. I don't think we've seen it um, since 17. And, mm-hmm. and even in 17, it wasn't until they got, what, four, five, six games in. We're like, wow, they could, they could have something here with his Carson Wentz. So I, I, um, I would say the only that. other team would be the 0-4 team. 
Yeah. You know, when I asked that question. Oh, oh yeah. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they brought T.O. in. Yeah, I was, 04 and 17 were the two th teams I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 04, that was, I think, the pr first preseason game where Donovan, like, did a little play action and then just threw that bomb to yeah. T.O. and the place yeah. went nuts. And we thought, oh, man, what a season this will be. And it was. And I still think T.O. was the MVP of that Super Bowl, even in a losing effort. Yeah. So uh, that was a really special season. And they got to the Super Bowl. That Anytime you get to the Super Bowl, that, that's great. But, uh, you know, whether or not they get there remains to be seen. And I don't think it's a slam dunk. And the mm -hmm. fact that they have played kind of uh, mediocre over the past four or five weeks is part of it. I also think it cements, for me, the reason that Jalen Hurts is the MVP. You just you saw what happened without him, and with him, they're a different. With him healthy, they're a different team. And um, you take him out of the equation, and all of a sudden, they can get beat or or come real close. So I think it's going to be a lot different though tomorrow. Okay, guy, back. You're muted. You're still muted. I think somebody's muted. Yeah. Michael Barrett. Barrett's uh, no, muted. I'm not muted. I'm good to go. Barrett's muted. That's why we wanted it, man. I'm going to talk to him later. You know what I mean? I don't need to hear him, man. I don't need to no, Barrett, are you there fixed? We there we go. There now we go. We go. Yeah. Yes. My cord keeps popping out. Are um, those the same glasses you wear on the air? No. Uh -uh. I knew These it. Blue. The blue glasses. Yeah. These are blue light yeah. glasses. I, I hear Oh, blue light glasses. Yeah. yeah they, I yeah, can they're, see they're, myself good. in your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hey, Mike, let me look at this then. Yeah. I, I'm a firm believer that this team is still the best team in the NFL. And I, you know, I I, I bet you're one of those 49er guys that think the 49ers are the better team. Hey boy, he but is just stubborn beyond belief. He is on the 49ers, man. It's, he is it's so crazy. crazy. I, I, I don't understand why people – you are what your record is, number one. This team is built the right way, number two. Number three, the leadership we have in place is going to take us to that next level. The message got lost in translation. With um, you know, with 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 the quarterback change, you know, I, I really think that Jalen stepped back to try to allow uh, Minshew to go out there and 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 be that leader since he was the one on the field, so they didn't get the same message. Now that the captain is back on the ship, I really think that's why this team will be back to playing to what they are. You know, what are your sentiments of that? I think you could very well be right. I know he has indicated that Jalen, like I, I, I don't want to get in the middle of anything. And it was Gardner Minshew's team for, for that game or, or two. Um, uh, and I, and I do buy that. I'm just questioning whether or not he's going to be healthy enough to run the offense as it's designed. And he's got to take hits. He's got to, he has got to carry the ball or there's got to, there's got to be the threat of him carrying the ball for them to be effective offensively. And, um, and I think he's the type of guy who will suck it up. I mean, if he can't, if he can't be effective, it's because he can't play. If he can't be effective, it, he's got to be in serious pain and to be able to what he, do what he did even against Chicago after he got crunched like that and throw and and then the ensuing weeks, who, who did he hit AJ Brown um, when he dropped it right in a basket on that bomb. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if that's if that's a, a, an injured shoulder, I'll take that every day of the week. Um, but at the same time, Barrett, um, you know, I think you, you may recall our, our friend Vaughn Hebron, who used to play for the Eagles, got two rings with the Broncos. He used to say every game, and Gunnar, I know you know this, he used to yeah. say every game is a season. And it is a <laughs> what have you done for me lately endeavor. And so, yeah, they were great for, for the first 11 games, 12 games, 15 games, but then they started to falter. And I do believe that if you are not on the field and playing games um, every single week, that you lose a little something. And as I said earlier, if, if what you gain is health, that's, not a, that's a huge thing. That's not a small thing. Mm -hmm. But if you're losing your rhythm, tempo, and timing, that, that is significant. And you would know better. Because because you've had those weeks off as a player, you faced Robert Porsche in a battle <laughs> against Detroit. You know you so so you know what you know what that's like. But that's why I say the tempo of the season, the tempo of the week, is that is that significant or not? It, it is significant, but you, you're dealing with a team that's a veteran team. Number one, number two, you have a quarterback that plays beyond his years and is and is. Uh, virtually a coach on the field. So the message you'll be getting and, and the team is getting is one that, all right, we know that it's a marathon. 
We know that over the past couple of weeks we fought a little bit, but hey, it's time to go out there and play. Now, you know, it's concrete. We will have our best 46 dressed and ready to rock and roll <clears throat> on uh, on Saturday. So in saying that, our best 46 is better than their best 46. And, you know, I can't see them playing uh, down to the level of their competition, but playing above that, especially what's at stake. Yeah. Robbie, what's the point? You, you, you're the points uh, spread guy. What's the seven point and a half. say to you? I know, I know. It, well, it tells me okay. Vegas is pretty confident in the Eagles. If, if it's more than a touchdown, I think it may drop. It may get to about seven, six and a half. But I think, I think where it sits right now, I, I think absolutely uh, Vegas looks at this as an Eagles game. I will say this, Michael. The thing that, that I'm – I think you, you make great points uh, about the, the sort of layoff and the lull that they're in. That lull is probably, yeah, they've been okay. Yeah. Nah, they've been very mad. I, I think because of what Barrett brought up with, with like the culture that they have and the veterans who have been here and won a Super Bowl and know what it takes com- combined with what Sirianni's done mm-hmm. and Jalen being, as Barrett says, beyond his years. I think those things are going to really help them to kind of get redialed in, if you will. Uh, when when the game starts on Saturday night, I truly believe that. I think that's a big piece. I think teams that lack culture, you could see them just fall into that that you know that abyss that they sometimes fall into. But I think with this team, this is a mature, dialed in team, and I think that is going to help them on Saturday. And it's it's not in, to take anything away from the Giants. What they've done has been amazing. But I just look at it, Michael, and I see from a talent standpoint, quarterback advantage, Eagles, offensive line advantage, Eagles, receivers, Eagles, tight end, Eagles, defensive line, Eagles linebackers, Eagles, secondary Eagles. The only position I really get the Giants is running back. Now, the one thing I think you could argue is coaching because Dable's been unbelievable and Martindale's really good. So I think that's the one thing that you could argue. But I would say for the most part, you know, when you look at all those categories and you include in the, the maturity of this team, I think that bodes well for the birds. I, I agree with you. The only thing is you say quarterback, and absolutely, if you if you hold up uh, Jalen Hurts and, and uh, Daniel, Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones to the yeah. light, obviously it's Jalen Hurts. However, they're not playing against each other. And when right, I look right, at Daniel Jones right, and what right. he did and the element of surprise that he used and how yeah. effective Jalen Hurts is that is with that and how effective the Eagles offense is with that, and then you take a look at Daniel Jones and you got third and four and you're expecting pass and you got third and seven and that guy goes, he can do that. We saw him do it against Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That is concerning to me, and I think the Eagles, not just the Eagles, any team, I mean, you know Barrett, you're you're, uh, you're you're playing your tendencies. You're playing what you think another team will do based upon their statistics, based upon what you're seeing on film of that team. And, and so if they do something unexpected, then you're on your heels. So Daniel Jones, look, they were six and two in the first half of the season. I don't remember who they played or why that was. They were three, six and one in the second half of the season. Now, all of a sudden, sw- slate is wiped clean and they are one and oh, and the mm-hmm. Eagles have yet to play. So I know I can see Barrett tomorrow in the post game show. What did you say? <laughs> right. after, after, after the Eagles, yeah, he's, he's taking receipts right yeah. now, Michael. He, yeah. as, well, look, as Robert look, I, hope that, I hope that happens. I, yeah. I'm just, you know, I think a lot of times we watch all this stuff. We just think based on magic, it's just going to uh, happen. Well, because this is what the Eagles have done, but it's a whole different deal. Uh, not to mention beating a th- team three three times in one season. I know it's been done, but it is a – well, it's a rarity that teams play three times in one season. It's a rarity that one team loses three times. But uh, – and, and the Giants, with that win at Minnesota, you talk about culture. Their culture just took a step up. I'm not saying it's what the Eagles' culture is, but all of a sudden they, they, they got strength. They love this guy, Dable. I mean, he seems like a oh, great yeah. guy. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you speak of his his absence now in Buffalo, and Josh Allen hadn't been as good as Josh Allen was when he was working with with, uh, with Dable. Yeah. So so um, I, I think the fact that, that this team wants to play for him, it's just going to make for a very interesting game. And yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead go I'm, so, sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. Go ahead, finish. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm one. I am of the opinion that you always defer the kickoff. If you win the toss, I don't know if yeah. I would do that tomorrow night if I'm yeah. the Eagles. I might mm-hmm. take my ball and take my chances. And everyone talks about the link crowd, too. The easiest way to get the link crowd or the or the uh, the uh, arrowhead crowd or any big crowd out is just score first. Score a couple of times, and they are silent. And you know well, guys, especially in Philadelphia, we'll sit on our hands if, if we think, oh, they don't have a chance. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. So they, I would take the ball and score it. 
Go ahead, Gunnar. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know, Michael, uh, I think we all sit here in unison and agree. We believe the Eagles are going to win that game just based on overall strength, tenacity, versatility, depth, so on and so forth. But to support your case and, and to bring, because Rob, Rob mentioned a word that, that triggered what I want to talk about, the word culture. Go back to the Andy Reid era. Andy Reid was big on culture. Andy Reid had a series of dominant teams in the NFC. Andy Reid, in the playoffs, when he was expected to win, lost to the Giants one year, lost to the Rams the next year, lost to Tampa Bay the next year, and lost to Carolina. There's no way on God's green earth they were supposed to lose to Carolina. What was that game, 15 to 10 or mm -hmm. something like that? And McNabb got hurt that game? And I talk about how there's always these un, these elements that we don't foresee. We we break down everything. We think we covered everything and, and turn over every leap of bread. There's always the unseen that you don't know about. And while I am confident, if, if if I was a betting man, I'd bet everything I had that the Eagles are going to take down the Giants tomorrow. But to support what Michael is saying, because it is a fair analysis, you just don't know until a game is played. You don't know. You don't know if key components that start the game are going to finish the game that could turn the tide of the game. You don't know who's going to win that turnover, that, that definitive turnover battle, which the Eagles have not won the last four games. You know, so there's all these elements you have to take into consideration. But again, I go back to what I initially said, Michael. I believe the Eagles are going to win that game, but I like what you said, you know, that people yeah. don't want to hear. You know, you got to right. respect the unexpected. You don't. Yeah, you yeah. I believe the Eagles are going to win the game as well. I'm, you know me. I'm just a wuss. I'm, I'm real nervous about that. <laughs> and, and, and you, you know, you get, that that's why they play them. Also, um, of those NFC Championship games that you mentioned, uh, I know Ari I don't think you mentioned the Arizona game, but I think they had beaten Arizona earlier in that season. Yeah. I think yep. they beat Tampa Bay earlier in that season. Yeah, yeah. I think they beat Carolina earlier in that season. Uh, I, I forget the other ones you, uh, you mentioned. I don't know if they played them that season, but certainly just because you played somebody. And, and then with the Tampa get, Bay game, there was, oh, they don't play well if it's cold. It's, it's you know, under it's, 33 it's, degrees. Pull all all those yeah, pull all those statistics out, and, and then it doesn't apply to that one game. So the mm -hmm. Eagles are 5-0 and at home in the divisional round, unless they're 5-1. and you know, I, I don't want to think that way, but, but, but it, it, it just makes me nervous. Uh, I just don't think you can. I just don't think you can. You can uh, discount it. I was. You I was can. listening. To, I was listening to your radio station today, Roberto on WIP. I was listening to John and Joe and John Ritchie's like, it, "Are you? It's impossible. There's just. It's not going to happen that the Eagles are going to lose this game." Blah, blah, blah. And of course, Joe was taking the opposite. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I hope you're right, John. I, I hope you're right. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a slam dunk, but you know, we're going to see tomorrow at eight fifteen or so yeah. what the heck the story is. Well, I mean, I get that. I, I do. I get that. Everybody knows that any given Sunday. But you get, I mean, it's, it's always an if. You know, what if somebody goes down? Well, man for man, talent is going to take over. And that's my biggest pet peeve right there. We're a much more talented team. We have more. Dable has his team playing above their talent. <clears throat> even if they're playing above their talent, they're still not more talented or even close to being as talented as this Eagles team. I mean, there's so many ifs. If, if, my uncle is not my aunt. My aunt is not my uncle. There we go. You know what I'm saying? It's to me that to me to not you know nothing. So no, you want you know, to... lacking one thing or or having one thing. Yeah, if your aunt had something, she'd be your yeah, uncle. That, 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 yeah. That's yeah. why I didn't. Yeah. I want to put it in, you know in in a better term so you mm -hmm. guys don't get on me for saying what I want. But I really no, want to say. It, <laughs> but I'm just saying. I I'm trying to stay out of trouble. But that's I don't deal in ifs. If I deal in, I, I I I try to deal in what I know. I try to deal in what I've seen. I've broken down tape. I saw exactly what um, this team, how this team could lose. Time possession. Time possession is the biggest thing. The only thing that really hurts the Eagles is time possession when it comes to any of their losses. And um, any time that a game turnovers. is turnovers, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I also the thing I keep hanging my hat on, Barrett. I do not believe in the Vikings. Like as much as people are going crazy right. about exactly. their performance, right. I think the Vikings defense stinks, and I don't think the Eagles defense stinks. Right. Yeah. So, and he, he didn't get a sack on Daniel Jones, and I know he's elusive, but the Eagles got to him a ton when that game mattered in Week right. 14, right. and I think they're going to get to him tomorrow. And if it's if it's Reddick, look out for a strip sack because that's his yeah. expertise, bro. That's yeah. I mean, they got Neil versus Reddick. Neil versus Reddick, a rookie playing playoff football 
versus Reddick, the number two sack guy in the NFL. Let's say mm-hmm. let me just put that in your mind. Think about it. A rookie against a 16 sack defensive end. I hear you, you but guess me? what? The Giants, I think they're second and fewest turnovers in the NFL. The Giants are in the top five in Preach red it, zone Michael. offensively, it. top five in red zone defensively. So, you know, they, they've been pretty good. I don't yeah. know what the heck happened in that three and six. Where are the Eagles on that same list ahead of the Giants on good both point. of those same lists? Good, yeah, abs- absolutely. Ah, 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 Yesterday we had to do. Yesterday we did a. Uh, we had to do a, a pep rally for the Eagles. <laughs> How about this old man? This old man came to us and said, And Am I lying? <laughs> no, you were telling me it was beautiful. It was so great. Yeah, the first time I ever heard him say, "Ah, oh. what, what did he just say? Sounded like he said, <laughs> and Right. Thinking, and, what don't oh. I know? Oh, man. You're I got not home. alone. And my, oh, and my Rob was like said, this. Barrett said, I don't know. What's that mean? <laughs> I, said, I didn't know what that meant. I don't know, but I'm going. I tell t- them to make T-shirts. I, hey, I, I know. hey, Michael. Yeah, you you gotta check, yeah. Michael, you got to check the Abonics Dictionary to figure that out. <laughs> I don't think it's in there. <laughs> but look, Rob, Rob, in there. Rob let it slide like two or three times first. So then we got off air. He said, uh, hey, um, say Barrett. So what's up, man? Hey, um, what is out of <laughs> I never knew. I didn't know if I was agreeing with it, disagreeing. Yeah. I, I was like, all right. Next and finally, oh, guns that funny. Uh, if you uh, all you do is out of die equals damn Skippy. That's right. Right. <laughs> yes. Damn yes. Skippy. Yeah. I don't you know. are the translator. <laughs> yes. So hold on. So so then Rob Rob says, "What does that mean?" And then and then then uh, your boy Gunner goes say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you say that That's the other day. Means. I didn't comment on it, but what the hell does that mean? I'm like, That's what it means. What I, what I love about you, what I love about that is that you stuck with it, and now everybody else is saying it. We're all stealing it now. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, we're I appropriating it. Yeah, I, look, I knew I arrived right. when Ray said it. When Ray yeah. said, see, I don't know. <laughs> I was like... Did Ray do that? That's yes, awesome. He did. Yes, he yeah. did. Oh man! Now you know that's made it. It is officially. Right. Made oh. made it. You know what I mean? I mean you got you got John and you got ah, nah, nah, coming out of Philly. That's pretty damn good. That's I'll it. That's you, why you oh. was gonna win. Damn it! I'm, I'm um, looking forward to Ray saying it tomorrow. Barrett, ah, nah, nah. <laughs> yep. After oh a big side. Uh, Michael, oh, uh, what, what's uh, the uh, what's the coverage? What time do you guys get it kicked off tomorrow? And then I know obviously post game as well. But what time are you guys rolling uh, for the big game tomorrow? Thank you, Roberto. On the uh, pregame, we're on the Plus Channel, NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus, uh, and then a clock hits zero on the post game show or on the main channel. We've got Birds Huddle pregame at six thirty, also on Plus. Uh, then it'll be Barrett, and it's Ray, and it's Ruben. Um, Ruben's uh, uh, Ruben's at the link. And we'll be talking about uh, all the Eagles preparations for the Giants. That's at uh, seven o'clock, awesome. and, and then uh, and then we've got uh, in game live as well on all your NBC Sports Philadelphia social media pages. I'm, I'm really excited about this game. It's one of those things where you try to keep it out of your mind. So you it's, it's getting harder. Game. It's hard today. Yeah. Now it's yeah. today. It's really hard. now. I'm starting to really get excited. I'm like man. Yeah. Playoff football in Philadelphia. With Love it. it. It's going to be great. Michael, listen, Love appreciate it. a couple minutes, man, as always. You know you it. Go. This actually fit on my head. That does fit. Time. Before, before the say, show you started. Can, if you can put that on your head, you get my props. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, how much, you, how much you offering? <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it, Michael. There, man, with some, with some Pam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, oh, Michael, we'll God. catch you tomorrow, man. Thanks for your time today. All right, guys. My good, pleasure. Mike. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Take care of the great Michael Barkhead. All right, let's get a quick one in here. We got Pat Leonard coming up from the New York Daily News. We'll talk to him. We'll continue this Eagles-Giants breakdown with Pat, who does an amazing job covering the team uh, for the Daily News. All right, we're going to quickie in here. That's Gunner. That's Barrett. I'm Rob. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. I'm going to tell you right now about ProAction Restoration. If you have a home, you have a business, and you've experienced the pain, inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage, you name it, they are the people that you reach out to because ProAction is on call 24 hours, seven days a week. I, I personally experienced this. I went through it at my parents' house. They got some flooding in their basement. I called Pro Action on a Saturday, and they were right there. They cleaned it up. The crew was professional. The price was right. They were licensed, bonded, fully insured, and they've been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. 
ProAction will work in conjunction with your insurance company as well. Again, it could be water, could be fire, could be smoke damage, mold remediation, you name it, they can handle it. Give them a call, 610-623-3760, 610-623-3760, or online at ProActionRestoration.com. That's ProActionRestoration.com.